predicted a whole mess of things that have come true. Such as? Such as, for example, the discovery of Neptune and Uranus, Hitler, world wars, the coming of the demons. Big deal. That hasn't happened. Not yet. Still time. Deal. That hasn't happened. Not yet. Still time. What's happening? It's the rapture, Shauna. The rapture. The virtuous have gone to heaven, and the rest of us have been left below. We were fools, and because we rejected God, tacitly accepting Satan, we must suffer through the apocalypse. <laughs> I choose to be gay! Scripture says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. If you'll notice, the scripture says you can't convert them. You can't get them right. 
The scripture does not say to try to go into their midst and evangelize them and reform them. The scripture says to turn away from them. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 6, the first one to show up is the man of sin. He's an imitation of Jesus Christ. He's an anointed one. He's a Christ himself. He preaches a false Jesus. He preaches a false spirit. He preaches from a false Bible into a false church. He's an imitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He does his dirtiest work inside the church, in the halls of religion. For they've already received his spirit. They've already received his word. They've already received his Bible. They've already received his religion. They've already received his politics. They've already received his economic system. The world is ripe and ready for the coming of the Antichrist. Nothing has to happen tonight in order for tomorrow morning the man of sin to step forth and take control of this earth. Nothing has to change on planet earth for him in 24 hours to become the very incarnation of Satan himself. If you have any sense tonight, you'd take note of that. You'd say to yourself, I understand now why things are as bad as they are. It begins to make sense why this earth is spinning out of control. The Antichrist is on his way. They make fun of him. They mock him. They sing about him. They think they can control him by saying these things. But he's a powerful being. If you have half sense tonight, you know that we could be within a shooting war with Russia in no time. You know that we could be at war with Iran in no time. You know that a conflagration could break out in the Middle East and also in Eastern Europe. My friend, that could make the Second World War look like a picnic. The next war will produce tens of millions of casualties. The next war will bring in the worst famine the earth has ever known. And the Bible talks about how that food is so scarce that food cannot be found. And it'll be at that moment that you reach the moment of truth in your own life. Will you sell your soul and take the mark of the beast? Oh, this movie will haunt me for the rest of my life. Marge, what if the rapture is coming and I haven't led a good enough life? I could be left below. God wouldn't spring the rapture on us unannounced. He'd send us signs. Marge is right. The rapture isn't coming. There haven't been any ominous signs. Okay, let's see. Earth is channel 23, I think. You remember when the Bible said many are called and few are chosen? Remember that statement. Many are called, but few are chosen. We're going to get to that. Remember that statement. Many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Remember that. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to walk after the Spirit? and to not walk after the flesh. Then we get into two camps here, folks. Flesh, right? The flesh and the spirit. The flesh is of a natural way, which is by sight. The flesh does things by what it sees. The flesh, the world is interpreted by the flesh through the eye. The truth is given in a supernatural way, which is by faith, to the spirit man. To walk after the spirit is to live your life according to the spirit. To walk after the flesh is to live your life in the natural way. Is not the flesh natural? Doesn't it say, walk by faith and not my sight? Was that an advisement? Or type of command. Here's a dividing line, folks. Suicide rates are going up. Do you know why? Because here's what people are saying. I'm falling. I'm going into a hole. I've tried everything. And I'd rather die than to go another day. Who here who here among that can hear me? Do you hear something wrong 
something tragic with that statement. Do you hear something in that statement that goes along with Romans 8.1? I do. I hear it all the time and I deal with it. Every week I deal with suicides with the same exact origin. I'm going to narrow it down for you. People exhaust their way of doing things. They exhaust their way of doing things. They refuse to turn to the Lord. It's not that they don't see it. Now the conversation used to be that some would turn to the Lord and find out that they are loved and accepted. They would become Christians. Something different is happening now. There was a person who wanted to commit suicide. They said they would rather die than to continue to go through life with what they're dealing with. And they wanted to cut their wrists right there on the spot. And after a long conversation, the individual said, And I've tried the Lord and I hate him. That's what they said. He didn't do anything. The churches, I mean, a deep hatred popped up in this person of Christ, of the Father. Right there at that moment, while I'm looking at this individual, I'm looking at this individual, and you would think that I begin to see a situation that's hopeless. I never see that with a person who wants to commit suicide, no matter what they say. I'll tell you what I saw. I begin to hear something he spoke in the hearts of many who call themselves Christians. That's what I heard. That's exactly what I heard. In the heart of many people who call themselves Christians is a resistance of Christ. A deep resistance of Christ. That same spirit driving suicide. The one that says, I have exhausted all of what I know how to do. And I would rather die because nothing works. Is in the same folks who say they're in the church. Because they have exhausted. There are a lot of Christians out there. They say, I've done everything I know how to do and nothing is still working. What do you mean? Well, 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 well you can't stop there. What about Christ? They're going to start ending up saying, what about him? It never worked for me. Now that's going to be tragic. The tragic thing is a believer who says that. Because many will be turned over to a reprobate mind. They have made themselves willing. They're willingly ignorant of the truth. Which means they know the truth and deny it. They stand against it. They won't do it. They're going to still do it their way. Or it's going to be the highway. Do you know what then happens? That happens when you are emotionally compromised. And when you are emotionally compromised. You're in view of the throne. life is being weighed, weighed in the scales and you feed your flesh at that moment because you get away with it. Everything you get away with has a potential to grow, remember that. If you don't die from what you do, it has a potential to linger, remember that. But for those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who walk by the Spirit, it's very easy to walk by the Spirit. It's even easier to turn away from the flesh. I know that people taught you it was hard, wrong. Wrong. As we continue to go through Romans, you're going to say, what? It is easy. What's wrong with me? You will take a stance against your flesh. Those who are really predestined will take a stand against their flesh. They will overcome all things in the world. They will prevail. They absolutely will. You know why? Because the Messiah said they would. 
In fact, Jesus said they would do many things. Because the darkness is here. It says, Romans 8, 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the law of sin and death? Do you guys know what that is? The law of sin and death. It is right there. Okay, well, let me get to it. The wages of sin is, what do you get in return for sin? Death. You get death, right? The wages of sin is death. How many of you know that? It was written, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's not always immortal death. Let me tell you what that means. That means everything you endeavor to do will die in your life. Everything that could have been good dying because of sin. Because of a mere sin. Something useless to your life. The wages of that sin is death. A dead situation that situation for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made you free from the law of sin and death did you hear what I said when you go out into the world and you sin and your situation in your household is dead now I'm gonna read this to you one more time are you guys with me are you listening because you might want to hear this I'm gonna read it one more time for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. A law is something that has to happen like gravity. Now do you understand? It's a law. Can man reverse gravity? No, they can't. They're still trying to overcome gravity in the public's eye. They have workarounds, yes. Does fire still burn? That's another law. Fire is hot. Is it cold yet? No. Are you guys beginning to see the wages of sin is death? I know this for a fact. Anything created in sin is going to die. That's tragic. Nevertheless, it happens. Now, are you getting this? All these things, think of your life. You should be saying right now, woe is me. A lot of things are surely going to kick the bucket. That's what each and every one of you should be saying. Right now, you should be saying that, right? However, now that you understand that, listen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Listen to what I'm about to say. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus trumps the law of sin and death. You're free from it. If you're free from a law, that law can't take effect in your life. Death can no longer take place in your life. My goodness. We are so undeserving of these things. But we were bought with a price. Now, can I read the whole thing to you, one and two? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, number one, to walk after the Spirit is to be in Christ Jesus. The ones in Christ Jesus do not walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And when you're in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made you free from the law of sin and death. Sin and death was your inheritance. But the redemption from the Lamb made that null and void. Now do you see? Do you see? It's impossible without Christ. It's impossible. Now let me ask you this. Who wouldn't, who in the world understanding this would go another day? walking after the flesh who to have such a victory upon your life that you don't deserve to be free from the law of sin and death who in the right mind will still walk after the flesh after understanding this who 
who would do it? The one who excuses it will continue to do it. The one who gives no, they give their flesh no excuse. That person is surely destined to be absolutely 100% free. Oh, and guess what? Because tomorrow is promised to no man. That promise is for today. What I'm reading to you in Romans 8 applies to you right now today, not tomorrow. See, nothing God said can be for tomorrow. Because he said tomorrow is not promised to anybody. His prophecies cover all time. His promises cover today. Do you understand that? His promises cover today. Because no man is promised tomorrow. And God does not lie. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, God sending his son in likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Well, this is even more powerful. I get the feeling somebody's going to get a, one of those sure victories after this one. They'll be doing a victory dance. See, in a lot of cases, people can, they don't have the power to have faith. Right? Because they have condemned themselves. And when they condemn themselves, they also condemn or limit the power that's working in their lives. And so they begin to live negatively. Going head over heels into the flesh. Because they too will say, what's the use? So instead of being the person committing suicide all at one time, they're committing slow suicide every day of their life by saying, I'm ready to die. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Why would anybody say the law was weak through the flesh? Why would they say that? Do you guys know why anybody would say that? I'll tell you why. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh because people still couldn't overcome sin through it, through the law. It was weak through the flesh. The flesh made the law weak, which means it was unobtainable. You couldn't obtain it. It caused you to be guilty, but you could not get over it. See, if people could get over it, they wouldn't have to give blood sacrifices for the sake of sins. They would be done with sin. It didn't have the power to make one done. We're going somewhere here, folks. It did not have the power to make one totally free of sin. It didn't. Because they kept giving offerings. You can read that in the book of Hebrews. It had no power to do that. It caused guilt. But because of the flesh, the law itself did not have power for a person to overcome sin. For what the law cannot do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now, if he condemned sin in the flesh, having given his life once, then sin condemned in the flesh has already taken place. It's already been condemned. If it's condemned, it is powerless. Do you understand? If anything is condemned, it is powerless. See, a criminal who is condemned to death is already locked up. A criminal that's out there doing stuff, he's not condemned yet. He's on the loose. Sin was on the loose. It was on the loose. Now it's condemned through Christ. If it be condemned, then I can overcome it. Oh, I love this. I love this. If it's condemned through Christ, I can surely overcome it. See, this will reach the minds of those who are sick and tired of their flesh. They, listen, they're sick and tired of sitting at home, reading the word of God. No power is happening in their home. Stuff is still happening like you wouldn't believe. No power being exercised anywhere. The Holy Spirit moments are far and few in between. They start to feel hopeless. They have to fight everybody on every curve. And then that sin enters into them. And they're the ones that feel doomed, saddened, depressed, frowns on the face. They're crying. Some people are tired of that. And they're saying, forget the flesh. Forget sin and the flesh. It is, it's a funny thing. When you get upset with your flesh, you're finished with sin. You don't care what your body craves. 
You, you just speak to your flesh and say, well, you're going to starve. You'll bring your flesh under submission. If it continues to lust, you'll say, well, I know exactly what to do for you. And if you go down, we both go down, but I'm free. You're dead anyway. You will not run my life anymore. You have a vehicle and it's late at night. Your flesh will make you drive to the strangest places to satisfy a taste of your flesh. That's not a taste of your spirit. That is what you will do for the flesh in the wee hours of the night. You will go out and go get that thing that satisfies your taste. But who will do that for the spirit? Do you guys see how that works? Your flesh can make you do so many things. Now you may say, well, that's a small thing. Sure it is, until you do it all the time. And then you begin to do everything by your taste. Well, what does the body crave? Now your body is ruling you. And ruling everything you put in your cabinets. Isn't that something? Your body rules you. Men walk in ignorance. Ignorance is not knowing. It is not stupidity. Men walk in ignorance. Thinking they know all these things. They do not. They don't. And the dark ones will only be dark to those who remain in the flesh. The dark ones have nothing to do with the one who walks after the spirit. They are here for the flesh. That's what they're here for. Search the prophecies. Search the sayings of the prophets. You'll know that to be true. They're after those who are of flesh and they're here you, you see they're not coming people think they need to be let out of the abyss abyss my goodness if I told you the abyss was opened would you deny it would you if I told you that Apollyon has opened the pit would you deny it? If I told you Apollyon has been very busy. Would you deny it? If I said to you the angel with the key to the bottomless pit did two things. One, he opened the pit. And the other he began to seal prophecy. He sealed it in the minds of those who belong to Christ. And if I were to tell you you can find that biblically, would you fall out of your chair? People think Apollyon is only spoken of in Revelation. Wrong. People think those things in the pit are only spoken of in the book of Revelation. Wrong. People think that the angel with the key to the bottomless pit is only spoken of once wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You see, the truth of the word is hidden from the wise. Those who say they know it, it's always going to be hidden from. Those who become like a child, they see the simplicity of the truth. The word must be discerned spiritually, not logically. It's failing those folks who tried to go for it logically. It's failing them. I get into these conversations because I know at an appointed time people's flesh is going to be ripped from head to toe and they don't even know it. In fact, man is not appointed to darkness. Nevertheless, it's coming. We think we know what darkness is and we don't. We sidestep all these conversations and we shouldn't. If we do not stand up in truth, and will continue to conceal the darkness that consumes many lives. That's what we'll do. If you deny something, it can continue to work. You see, there's a manifestation taking place. And it's about time this is placed in context in truth. We're not talking about guessing what something is. You can know exactly what it is. But before you think you know that all of them are evil, you better think. Because often, it says in the Bible, 
that men will judge those things they know nothing about. You need to know. Let me give you an example. How many know about witchcraft? Do you know about witchcraft? Do you know about the Inquisition and witchcraft? Witchcraft, as it was in times of old, was born through a woman. Do you know that? The history of witchcraft, and women, I'm not picking up on you. I'm just telling you. Witchcraft was born of women. Why? Because women, women, were giving room and having relations with demons in many forms. And the demon would always tell the woman an incantation how to obtain what she wanted. You know how they say a way to a man's heart is his stomach? Well, a way to a woman's heart is her eye. It's her eye. Through the eye, a woman will always judge. That's why they rearrange their houses so much. They naturally nest, but things approach them in their dreams, in their sleep, and in many forms. They can be seduced, and thus witchcraft was born. That's why they used to fry women to the stake. They used to burn them at the stake. And even in the times of Azazel, Pacuel, Estara, all the fallen angels, when they taught women many things, they taught men war, but they taught women many things and the women during that time became a priesthood and the unfortunate thing is that something will be upon people a time has already come the race has already begun and if Christians do not wake up and simply say yes, Lord, and if they continue to try and decipher everything that they can, I can tell you this, when the trouble comes, the only thing a person's going to say is Jesus. That's all that's going to come out of their mouths. Jesus. That's the first word you're going to yell. So what I'm telling you is this, most people out there in the world, guess what? When they begin to really see the darkness, they're going to cry out for the Lord. No wonder God said, call a solemn assembly. Weep between the porch and the altar. No wonder all these mighty men with whom armies back up went to hide themselves. Can you see Putin running for his life? Can you see Obama and Trump running for their lives? What could scare a man so bad they would run for their lives? Because they knew the wrath of the Lamb is coming because they know the true events that precede it. And they will not share it with anybody. And that's why Jesus said, They were buying and selling, marrying, giving into marriage until the flood came and took them all away. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's why he said that. They're not going to share the information. But he told them this, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Romans 8, 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, often I'll, I'll, I'll judge myself off. I judge myself a lot. <laughs> And often I'll say, well, I'm, I'm thinking these defeated thoughts. And I go back to the word of God, and sure enough, guess what? Guess what? It's because of being carnally minded. Sometimes you can lose yourself so deeply in the work that you do that you're not thinking spiritually at all. You can be severely carnally minded, not remembering things of the Spirit, and it's like your mindset goes to this place of, of just death, this very disparaged place 
right? The spirit's place. Because how many people have lived like this all along? How many have lived like that all along? How many people live like that? Because if you live like that, that's not what Christ promised each and every one of us. He promised us something else. But we accept the lesser. Why? Why do we accept the lesser? We accept the lesser because we're used to it. We accept the lesser because we're comfortable with it. That's why many are called and few are chosen. That's why many will fall away from the faith. Many will fall away from the faith. They will fall away from the faith. They will not come back. They will be gone. They will fall away from the faith. We've hit the crossroads months ago. And guess what's happening? People are walking in two different directions. And the gap is getting further and further apart. Further and further. Remember the flesh is of natural things. Based on what you can see. To be carnally minded is death. If you think naturally, you think in the realm of death. You're dead, but the spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, some people have no peace. They really don't. They have no peace. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something? Be real. Right? Be real and never get in the habit of being false. And here's what I mean by that. Sometimes we act like we're peaceful that we're full of life until we're left alone and then we're miserable right that's not the way to live your life that becomes a heavy burden upon your life that's not living truthful that's living with bondage don't do that right don't do that life and peace is granted to anybody who follows after all spiritual things it's that simple spiritual things you follow spiritual things. You become spiritually minded. By the way, now remember this, spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. When you are spiritually minded, life enters into you. Why? Because at that time, at that time, you're made free from the law of sin and death. Sin and death will weigh upon your mind, depressing you. Sin and death will be with you sitting at your table, sleeping with you in your bed. Sin on one side, death on the other. Now, how can anybody... Have life and peace where sin and death is right beside you all the time. Don't fake like you're free. Be free. It's in Romans chapter 8. Be free. Accept the truth and be free. Because if you fight against the knowledge of God, guess what? You'll always be in bounds. And an unexpected death will be coming for a lot of people. What am I saying? You don't have the time you thought you had. So I hope you're not playing. Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Do you see there? The carnal mind is enmity against God. Are you guys with me? You're listening. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Lord forbid my mind to be carnal. See, this is why. Uh, oh my goodness. This is a hostile opposition. You mean to tell me God is going to have opposition with hostilities towards me? Yes. If you're carnally minded. That should scare some people right now and saying, oops, there it is. Forget it. Forget it. Carnally minded is what? What is carnally minded? Anybody know what carnally minded is? That word deep comes. That word comes from Sartre's. But that came from flesh, to be flesh-minded. What is flesh? Natural. To be naturally minded. You know how people say, well, you know, this is reality. That's just the way you do it. That's carnally minded. And let me read it again, Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That is a hostile separation, an angry separation. My goodness, who wants that in their life? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody want that in their life? Anybody want an angry? An angry separation from God? It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. 
I, listen, I have no business with a carnal mind. Forget that. Forget it. I have no business because guess what? It has nothing to do with the Lord. It stands against everything from the Lord. It causes people to defend the flesh. That carnal mind will make you defend your flesh. And you will stand in that flesh and die every single day of your life, every day you defend it. Stop defending it and live and have peace in your life. Stop agreeing to kill yourself. Repent and depart from sin. By really choosing Christ. Don't choose him by word. And say oh yes I believe. And doubt everything he said. This is not the time for entertainment. Nor is it the time to make you feel good about anything in the flesh. Nor is it the time to make you feel that you have all the time in the world. Because you have this moment right now. And another moment is never promised to you. You don't have tomorrow. You have right now. So anything asked of you is to be done today. This will save you much grief. I'm sorry they didn't teach this. They didn't teach anybody back in the day that all the promises of the Lord were for right now because he didn't promise any of us tomorrow. They continue to tell us, well, you got time. To no, we don't have time. We have today. If a person says you have time to do something, they're defying what God has already set in motion. He said no man is promised tomorrow. So why would God tell a person you have time? That is hypocrisy. Our God is not a hypocrite. Does that make sense to folks? Because people have been lying through their teeth. You have to lie to defend your flesh. You have to stand against God and his principles to defend your flesh. And if you're tired of it, then die to it today. Right now. Tell it no, no, no. No more. Tell it no more. If you're tired of bondage, stop justifying flesh. Do you know how many days people have been in bondage and they continue to say tomorrow something might change and nothing changes tomorrow. Oh, and who wants a false change? You guys ever had a false change where it looks like everything's going to be okay and you're back in that same place of bondage again? Anybody ever? Don't give me a false change. I'll never trust in flesh nor in anything of the flesh. No, no. Romans 8, 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There it is. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Listen, I don't know about you, but I want to be pleasing to the Lord today, not tomorrow. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you want to be unpleasing to the Almighty? Stay in your flesh. Because let me tell you something. You answer this. Since when did Jesus or anybody that was under the unction of the Holy Spirit tell us that we couldn't do something? Huh? What lie is that? Anything Jesus asked of us, he has given us power to do. So I ask you this, who's lying to us? I'll tell you who's lying to us is the flesh trying to save itself. These conversations start a war in the flesh and people start saying, uh -uh, no, 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 not me. Not me. I have all the time in the world. They don't know what they're talking about. Not me. Your flesh starts squirming. Don't listen to that guy about that stuff. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know how much you've suffered and what you had to deal with. Of course it's going to take time. That's your flesh mind talking to you. And by the way, to be carnally minded is to have enmity with God. It's almost like your flesh is speaking. My words floating around in the air. You can scarcely hear them. And some don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear about the flesh. 
But if you're having a good time in the flesh, you're going to defend it all day. You'll draw near unto the Lord, right? And deny everything of him. That's why Jesus said, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? I'm not your Lord. The Lord of you is who you obey. And I ask you this, who are you obeying? Your flesh or the spirit? Uh-oh. Who do you obey, the flesh or the spirit? Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, they that are in flesh cannot please God. Now this is for those who said yes to Christ, and those who are not in the flesh. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Listen. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If the Spirit of God dwells in you. You're not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit if the Spirit of God dwells within you. Your flesh has been lying and fooling you over an easy, easy doing. See... A lot of people, you still can't deny it, I'm going to bring it up again. A lot of people are saying, where are the miracles? Where's the power of the Holy Spirit? How can I be wrong with what I just said? I thought for sure it was an unction from above. Where's the power? It's right here. The one that's not in the flesh has the Spirit of God dwelling in them. When the Spirit of God dwells within you, your flesh has no power. You got the first step right. Because you believe in Jesus of Nazareth. You believe he died on the cross to save you of your sins. You believe he was raised from the dead and resides at the right hand of the Father. You got that part right, but there's another step. Remember the guy who was blind and Jesus put spittle on the ground and wiped it on his eye. And what did he say? And go wash your face. And when he did that he washed. See, he got the touch first. And then he went to wash his own face. And then he could see. He still had to do something. The little girl that was healed, what did Jesus say? Go get her something to eat. She sealed the deal. See, I'm finding out this thing, that the Lord's word is consistent, but the wise can't see it. That's why I couldn't see it when I was smart. I had to become like a child to see it. You have the first step right, but for the Spirit of the Lord to dwell within you is to live your life after the Spirit. That's why. See, to live your life after the Spirit is to no longer believe your own flesh. All chains break when you do that change break when you do that you have to come to a point where you say no I'm not going to live my life by flesh See, no one's going to do that for you no one that's your choice once you break free though it's called the last stand the last stand and this conversation right now this simple thing right now is the largest key you ever had in your life it is the difference between life and peace and sin and death. Make that choice and be 100% yourself. But stop with the phoniness. Stop smiling when you're broken and be healed. Stop laughing when you're crying and be healed. If you want life and peace, then go and get it and stop acting like you have life and peace. Don't be full of death and try to act like you have life. You can have life. You can have it.
Uh, we got nothing left to eat. We gotta do something about it. You, uh... You wanna see how things work around here?